Hello and welcome everyone. It is I, Mike V. Hope you are all having a wonderful day today. In this video, I'm going to be answering a question that many players have asked on various YouTube channels. And that question is going to be about if slot machines are random, why is there a payback percentage? How can a slot pay back less than what it takes in while still being random? Well, I'm going to throw my Vegas cap into the ring. And I'm going to try to answer this in my own personal way. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so how is this all possible? Well, we need to know the differences between a random event and the payback percentage. I consider randomness and slot paybacks to be unique and separate things while they, at the same time, still work together. Uh, you know, just because a slot has a payback percentage does not mean that it is not random. And just because it's random does not mean that a slot cannot take more than what it gives back. They complement each other while still being different. Uh, this is an important concept to understand. And I think the confusion that people have when it comes to randomness and payback percentages uh, when it comes to slots is that uh, people cannot tell the difference between a random event and the payback percentage on a machine. So let's get started here. Uh, what is randomness? We're going to uh, look at some definitions here. So uh, randomness is inherent in every game and aspect of life, if you think about it. Uh, ev everything is not smooth sailing, as you may, may know, th throughout your life. For example, your flight to Vegas might suddenly be canceled for whatever reason. That is a random event <laughs> as well. So we experience random randomness in all aspects of our life in any game we play casino games or board games of any kind and that's uh, that's just part of life uh so so where is the source of randomness so that actually depends on the game in question for example in craps it is the rolling of a pair of dice in card games it is the shuffle and deal of a deck of cards and for slots it is the rng uh, that is the source of the randomness there, and the RNG is picking form of uh, uh, picking from the possible outcomes, and pro that are uh, the probable outcomes in that game, the possible which is listed on the pay table. So that's basically what randomness is, uh, to simplify it. But what's the payback percentage? It is a figure, so it's a number, a percentage number showing how much money put in a slot is returned to the players over the long term and that is key it is a long term number Ra uh, randomness is short term payback percentage is long term so think of it like that and for the payback percentage it's actually a, a simple math formula that we could use to calculate it so this is something that is actually calculatable you can't calculate randomness the probability is involved when it, uh, when it comes to randomness, as you can see, if we go to the next slide. So let's take a look at the uh, formula. So this is how to calculate the payback percentage, assuming you know both the two values here that you can multiply to get it. So it is probability times the total payoff equals the payback percentage, the probability of that event taking uh, uh, that event happening multiplied by the, the, the win, the total win, including your bet back. And then that equals the return, the RTP, the return to player, or the payback percentage. So since the outcome of all casino bets is less than one, a source of randomness is needed to pick from the list of possible outcomes. As you can see, nothing is certain in life, nothing is certain in the casino. So certain things may be more probable th than others. It still means that the hardest, uh, the most unlikely outcomes can still happen as long as there is a probability higher than zero. And so here in the bottom of the slide, I've listed a cup, a few examples of uh, probable outcomes. Uh, one is a roll of two dice totaling seven, a probability of one out of every six rolls or 16.67% of the time. A coin landing on heads, probability of one half or 50%. And then the third one here I just made up, it's a double diamond symbol landing on the first reel of a slot machine. It may have a 2% chance of happening. That's just a number I made up. I don't know the exact probability for that, but you can see that probability exists in slots just like in any other type of game or event. 
All right, so now we're going to go to the part where we give you a few examples. So we're going to start very simple here. And the first example we're going to use is uh, a simple flipping of a coin. So here is the rules of the game, or here are the rules, rather. Uh, so we're going to bet on one of two possible outcomes, heads or tails. Pretty simple. Each has a probability of 50%. If you lose, you forfeit your bet. And if you win, you receive an amount equal to your bet, double your money. Sounds fair, right? Well, as we can look here on the formula here, probability times the total win equals the RTP. Uh, one half, 50%, is the uh, probability of winning. Multiply by the total payoff, including your bet back, which is two, two units, double your money. A half times two is equal to one or 100%. It is a full 100% payback game. Meaning over the course of millions of coin flips, you will uh, more likely or than not have exactly uh, what you started with. Basically, no, no win, no loss. 100% of your money returned to you over time. Now, let's say I'm a casino and I want to make money off of this game. I don't want to just have an even game. What if I lower the payoff from a net win of one unit or $1 for every dollar bet? down to 0.9 units or 90 cents for a successful guess on heads or tails. Take a look at the equation now. So the probability of landing heads or tails is still 50% or one half, but the total payoff is reduced. Uh, so you win uh, 90 cents plus your dollar bet back for 1.9 units. So we multiply that by one half to get 0 0.95 or 95%. So I just created a payback percentage of 95% lowered from 100% on a simple game of heads or tails just by lowering the payoff. Notice how this game is still a random event. That is key. I didn't change the odds of heads or tails being more or less likely. All I did was just lower the payoff and that gave a payback percentage where the casino will make 5% of all money bet over the long term while still in the short term being a random event. It's still one and two for a heads or tails. I mean, that's the reason why casinos make money. That is the formula right there. Still not convinced? Let's go to a game that we actually see in the casinos. This is our second example. We're going to take a look at roulette. Very simple. So let's say you want to bet on a single number. Probability is one out of 38 on a double zero wheel. So there's uh, 36 numbers, one through 36, plus a zero and a double zero for a total of 38 possible slots that the uh, the white ball can land on. The payoff is 35 to one, plus you get your bet back for a total of 36 units. So let's uh, calculate the formula here. So we have uh, the odds are one in 38. We multiply by the total payoff, which is 36, which equals 36 over 38, so divide 36 by 38 to get 0 0.9474, or 94.74% payback percentage. If you prefer to have the figure shown as a house edge, just subtract 100% from, uh, subtract the result from 100% rather to get the house edge, which equals to 5.26%, which is the exact house edge uh, quoted for double zero roulette. But now let's say, what if I add another space or number to the wheel to create another option for the ball to land on? This would be like triple zero roulette. That's how it's done there. They added a third green space. So that brings the, pos the possible number of choices for the ball to land on to 39. So the probability of now getting that single number is now one in 39 instead of 38. We multiply that by the payoff, which is still 36. That has not been changed. So we get 36 out of 39 or 92.31% payback percentage. And just like the coin flipping game, this is still a random event. But this time, instead of changing how much the, uh, uh, the payoff is for, uh, for that outcome, we changed the probability. We made it harder for that number to be landed on because we added an extra space. So this is another way for casinos to change the long-term payback percentage while it's still 
being a random event. It's still a ball in a wheel that's still determining the randomness of a roulette game. That has not changed. So just making it clear here that randomness and the payback percentage, they're separate things, but they still go hand in hand with each other. It is quite amazing, too, if you think about it. And now finally, the final slide I'm going to be showing you today, and it's going to be the third example, and probably what you would be expecting is for slots specifically, because this uh, video is asking specifically about how slots can be random while still having a payback percentage. Uh, the first few examples is to show you that this is true with all casino games, not just slots. Uh, but this last slide should explain why it also applies to slots as well. So. Uh, I have here a couple of very simple slot machines that I've just created with an Excel spreadsheet. So on the left, uh, one, uh, the first one is labeled slot one and the second one is labeled slot two. So this is just a very simple uh, slot containing fi only five possible different combinations. Three sevens, three bars, three cherries, two cherries, and one cherry. And so I basically invented all of the probability and payoffs here, and everything else is just calculated. So uh, everything else is automatically calculated, rather. So let's just go through this. Starting at the bottom of slot one, we have uh, what appears to be a, a little over two-thirds chance of winning nothing on a spin of this theoretical game, uh, just about under 69% of the time, 0.6889. And then we have a 20% or 0.2 probability of getting a single cherry with a payoff of two. And as you can see, if you multiply the probability by the payoff, you get the return for that specific combination. And as you can see, all the, uh, the values under the return column are added together to get the total payback percentage. So 0.2 times a payoff of two is a return of 0.4 for, for the one cherry. Uh, two cherries, I have a probability of 0.2. One or 10% payoff is four credits. Multiply those by uh, two together to get an, a return of 0.4 once again, or 40%. Three cherries, I have that listed as one in 100 chance, 0 0.01, with a payoff of eight. Three bars, a, a probability of 0 0.001, or one in 1,000, with a payoff of 30. And finally, the top award of three sevens, a one in 10,000 probability with a payoff of 500. Add all the returns together, and we have a total payback percentage of 96%. Now take a look at the, the table uh, to the right, slot number two. I've made one change to this one. You can see it is highlighted there, and that is the, the probability for getting three bars. I reduced it from 0 0.001 uh, to 0 0.0005. So basically, I, I made it twice as hard for th for three bars to come up and what that so that's a one in a thousand chance reduced to a one in two thousand chance of getting three bars and just that simple change reduced the total payback percentage of the machine from 96 percent to 94 and a half percent and this is how casinos are able to choose a payback percentage or rather a uh, the uh, slot machine manufacturer is able to create the same game with different payback percentages over the long term. And they do it by changing the probability of certain winning combinations. And then you add those returns together to get the total payback percentage. So let's take a look at the, the three bullet points I have at the bottom here. So these are important big takeaways here. Casino game manufacturers have plenty of flexibility on how to design their slot machines, if you think about it. So in this example here, I just changed the probability of the three bars, but slot makers can choose to change the probability of any of these combinations in order to get the payback percentage of their liking or of their customer's liking, their customer being the casino that wants to buy the machine to put it on their on the casino floor. And as players, we have no clue on the probability of hitting the winning combinations. There is no information on the, uh, the pay table or on the game rules. We only get to see half of the equation, which is the uh, the pay table. And as you know from playing various slot machines, the pay table is the same across every single machine. 
you know, every double diamond machine is going to have the same pay table pretty much, you know, from the single cherry all the way up to the three double diamonds. So looking at the pay table alone is not going to, to tell us what the payback percentage of that machine is because the probabilities which are hidden, you know, the probability of hitting three double diamonds might be different at a machine in the casino next door than the one that you're currently in. And then since we don't have, since we don't know the probability of these, uh, of these combinations, we're not going to be able to calculate the payback percentage on our own. And I think it is this being the reason why there is still a lot of, of myths and people being mystified on how slots work, which allows for the continuation of various superstitions to propagate amongst slot players around the world over. And the final bullet point here I've listed here is that random events can take place in the short term while still providing casinos profits in the long term. And let me mention one more thing here before we finish off as well. Casinos have thousands of slots, maybe possibly dozens or even hundreds of table games across the across their casino. It does not take many days for a casino to hit the long term compared to us as individual players. Let's just say, for example, there are a thousand slot machines at a casino and every single slot is played a thousand spins every day. Well, that's a million spins in a single day. A thousand times a thousand is a million. By day seven, it is seven million total spins. So as you can see, and it takes about that many spins for the slots to, to reach their long-term payback percentage number, give or take maybe 1% in either direction. So casinos have the advantage of a larger number of games being played at the same time in which they have the advantage on. As a lowly single player, it may take us an entire lifetime to reach the long term. A single visit to the casino, anything can happen. And because hitting a jackpot is, while it's still very improbable, it's, it's not impossible. You can still hit that and you can still have a winning day at the casino. And it's that element of randomness that gets people in the door to try their luck. Even though slots, through all sources of measurements, if you think about it, it's, it's one of the worst games to play in the casino from a payback percentage perspective, but it's still possible to win on it in a single, uh, in a single visit to the casino. And that alone is enough for players to try their luck and possibly beat the odds, even if it's just for that day. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end it off right here. That was a long one. There was a lot to cover, and there's probably a lot more that I could cover. Uh, so if you have any questions, if there's something that, that you may not get and you need, need some clarification, go ahead and ask it in the comment section, and I'll be sure to answer it. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something new, do me a favor and give this video a like. I definitely appreciate it. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Share this with others, especially for people who may be believing in various slot machine myths and think that slots are not random. Uh, this is important for them, especially. Share it with them. Share it with others. Hit the bell icon to be notified once I release a brand new video. Until then, I will see you for the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Take care and go make it happen.